I think we're going to have to ch we're going to have to change feeding practices. We're going to have to do a lot on the water side from a, uh, it, being able to to show we can produce uh, this life cycle without the kind of level of water intake and uh, environmental footprint that we're leaving at the present time. The the piece that that uh, I think is a real wild card here is what happens to the corn situation in the Midwest. Because even if, if corn, if we can grow corn, I think we can only grow a finite number of bushels. And if we can only grow a finite, and mainly because of the heat, and the heat piece hasn't been tackled, uh, I think we can only grow a finite. So then you've got a crop there that isn't a food crop. Corn is a, a bio-industrial crop. So you want corn for adhesives, you want it for starch, you want it for ethanol, you want it for uh, cattle feeding, you want it for chickens and, and poultry, or chickens and uh, pork. It's going to be very hard for the beef industry to compete in that. And if uh, oil prices go to 100 to 150, well, go to 150 dollars a barrel, that pulls the ethanol piece with it too. And that pulls the price of corn towards the barrel of oil. And that pulls it right away from what the uh, feed, feed uh, guy can do. You know, an interesting story here, Jason, is uh, the act that created the land-grant universities in the U.S. was signed in the middle of the Civil War in 1862 by Abe Lincoln. And the author of it was a guy by the name of Morales. I think his name was out of Burlington, Vermont. And so this was the 150th anniversary, and they had the deans of the land-grant universities go back to Burlington, Vermont on July 9th this year. And as part of that, they put together a panel on producers. And the, they had a hog producer there. And the guy said, you know, if corn prices go to $7.25, he said, I'm out of business. And I, Mike, Hoffman from Cornell was telling me that story on the 30th of July. I said, Mike, on the way down, I heard the December prices, futures hit 808. He said, there's the casualty right there in the, in the hog business. And the beef business has that s same dynamic. Now, what we can do with beef that's different than, than uh, hogs is hogs are monogastric. Beef are a ruminant, and they're just a, a different type of fermentation vat. So we can do a lot of stuff with feedstuffs that can't go into poultry or chickens. So I think that's going to be a part of the salvation of the, of the beef industry, is that we can, we can take what would normally be a waste product and make a good feedstock out of it because we can do things in a fermentation vat with enzymes and, and bacteria and all that kind of stuff that you can't do in a, in a monogastric. gastric.